Namaste angels. This is the weekly love reading for the period of tomorrow, May 26th through Saturday to come June 1st. We're going to start with the dice. I'm beginning with 29, which is represents spiritual partnership, no and dirty movie, which for me is like an Aquarian kind of communication energy, um, like FaceTime, uh, Skype, texting, online dating, having met somebody online, and maybe now you're pursuing a relationship of some sort. And the speak spirit says, forget it. It relates to love. That can be about letting something go, like not holding on to it, just forget it. Cocktail, which we can often forget our troubles, as they say, over drinks and stuff. We can release stuff. As long as you don't develop, um, you know, a problem, a toxic problem and addiction. And lastly, weekend away. That for some could be representing this week, especially in the United States. We're celebrating Memorial Day this weekend. So some, you know, some people take like a four day weekend. Um, and for some, I suppose it could apply to next week too. Like there's a lot of schools that have closed around the country and around the world. Um, I'm going to start with the tarot deck use that to do the masculine perspective beginning with the king of autumn who is a capricorn virgo or taurus or someone likened to those traits or attributes compassionate accomplished charismatic and grounded everything's going to turn out great projects will be stunningly successful exciting new career opportunities are possible and money or resources that come your way will be invested wisely the king of autumn as it relates to love specifically um first of all as a court card it can be representative of an actual person in your life that's significant um possibly older and or well-to-do like established secure good job or owns his own business or something you know, that sort of thing, materially or financially. Um, well, yeah, well-to-do, wealthy or something, um, all possibilities. But um, just looking at the card and, you know, not as a specific person, it's about longevity, right? A, a worthy relationship, a relationship that, of which you are worthy, deserving. Your partner will feel that way about you. You'll feel that way about them. And, you know, it has the potential to go the test of time, as they say, longevity. And opening to the three of winter. Sadness is part of life, but you don't have to endure it alone. You may need a little time to heal, but once you work your way through the emotions, you'll be stronger than before. So in the general reading... I felt and saw actually as I was shuffling, I saw the three of winter several times and I felt like walking away from some, somebody or something. Uh, so perhaps there is a king of autumn who's walking away from someone or something or someone walking away from a king of autumn. And again, by king of autumn, I don't necessarily mean an earth sign. Maybe this person that represents, you know, the well-to-do, you know, businessman type of energy um generous person that could be from whom you're walking away regard or or that could be the person who's walking away from somebody else regardless of what sign they are king of autumn seven of summer it's time to stop procrastinating and to make a decision so that you can move forward with a priority if you need to do more research then do so but don't overthink the situation listen to your heart so somebody has a decision to make. This king of autumn can also be a female or a feminine. It doesn't have to be. I mean, these things are not like gender specific or even archetype specific. It can be whatever. Um, but sometimes they do hint to what it might be. So like this would be like a, a middle aged or older gentleman who, again, is, you know, fairly well off. And opening to the queen of spring, you know, who hints to a female um, person, but not necessarily. And somebody who's extremely you know, creative, talented, and passionate about something or someone. Talented, brilliant, independent, and charming. Don't underestimate your ability to manifest your dreams. You may have several priorities vying for you at once, maybe several um, options too. That's another meaning potentially, especially as it relates to love of the seven of water that was just here a moment ago. We could have several choices, several suitors um, from which to choose or something. That can be what this, what this queen of spring is saying. There's a lot of people that are after her. Um, 
but you know she can she has the ability to to choose and to um or to and or to give attention to each one at the same time however she wants to do that she can handle it all a queen of spring is a leo sagittarius or aries or someone likened to those traits or attributes and she is the you know representation of the divine feminine in general in the tarot and opening to i just not the i bumped down the queen of winter she was poking up her head too um and coming to the ace of spring representative of a brand new opportunity for somebody in this case in love passion could be sexual too um this is the ace of wands which is a very phallic kind of card and energy a wonderful new opportunity presents itself it may have come as a surprise but you'll still want to leap into action and to passionately pursue every possibility Again, this can be um, that opportunity may be specific to the divine feminine, for example, and or to a fire sign. Um, it may be more specifically a fire sign female, but it does not have to be. Here comes another character, the Prince of Autumn. So somebody a little younger than that king, maybe trustworthy, dedicated, protective and funny. Maybe this one's in his 30s, the other one's in his 40s, something like that. It's important to make a detailed plan before starting any new endeavor. Once you have that plan in place, then you can take immediate action steps and get as much accomplished as possible. The Prince of Autumn, like the King, is a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. And he is, um, in the tarot, considered to be the only knight that always makes it to his goal. Right. All of the knights have, um, you know, very specific traits. For example, like the Knight of Swords is very he doesn't waste time. He's very quick. And I can tell you um, air signs, at least Gemini's um, and or Aquarians, because I'm, I'm that too. I'm an Aquarius moon um, are very much like this. Somebody comes, but especially Gemini's. Somebody comes to me and tells me, you know, something. If I feel that I'm going to react, I'm reacting right then. I don't even need all the information. I took off before you finish even telling me. And that's how the Knight of um, Swords is. So sometimes you can get, <laughs> you can get derailed. You cannot make it to the end when you're running off like that. Right. Or you could potentially not be successful. Um, the night of water could get caught up, you know, being emotional, caught up in his, in his or her feelings, right? And not complete their goal. And the night of wands is more of this, like, he's super passionate. He's Prince Charming to me, but Prince Charming is kind of like a show off, right? Um, more of for show, for impressions, for, um, you know, to fit the, the character. So he might not make it either, but the Knight of Earth, the Knight of Pentacles, because he's been methodical and made this plan does. And that's basically how the story of the tortoise and the hare goes. It was the tortoise who, you know, was slow and steady wins the race. That was his, that was his plan. That was his tactical plan of how he was going to win. The um, hare was a showboat. He, he was fast, he was handsome, and you know, so he was a show off. And he just knew he was gonna win, and so he didn't. It's that sort of thing. And opening to Major Arcana card eight, Justice, which represents the sign of Libra and the planet Venus, which rules Libra. Fair decisions will be made after all of the evidence is reviewed impartially. Have compassion for others and try to see all sides of a disagreement. Um, this card is about balance or can be about balance too. fairness, equity, maybe sharing a load. Um, nobody having an advantage over the other. Right? Even playing field, even scales. It's 50 50 as the dice um, sometimes say and did say in the general reading. Now I just knocked down judgment, Major Arcana card 20. Um, coming to the seven of winter, caution will help you to avoid the loss of valuables, including non-material resources, such as time or peace of mind. Be aware of the results of your actions, as well as what others might be doing behind your back. The seven of winter is represents the energy of joy stealing for me. Here we have a bird that has stolen somebody's key, right? Somebody's opportunity. 
somebody's joy, um, quite potentially. And it can be about actual theft. Somebody you know, literally taking something from you or loss. You're losing something, misplacing something um, or, or someone, losing someone. And depending upon what, what, what it's partnered as far as other cards, sometimes it can be about something or someone coming back to you too. It can also be about us stealing our own joy potentially. Uh, and we can do that by lack of confidence, lack of esteem. So, you know, if we don't feel we're up to a challenge, we're not worthy or something, that's how we can end up blowing it. So that's how the seven of winter would be in that sense. On the heels of the queen of wands, who's, you know, at least as it relates to the tarot, she's sort of like this all capable sort of person. She's super passionate, super confident, super beautiful, you know, like <laughs> everything that's awesome. Um, so you would think, how can somebody steal something for her? It's possible. We can, even, even people like that, that, you know, like that we find um, sort of larger than life, often tend not to find themselves that way and can have insecurities. So that is, again, how we can end up robbing ourselves of an opportunity through our insecurities, through our fears. But the overall energy is the six of winter. The challenging times are coming to an end and you can now breathe a sigh of relief. Let go of the past and embrace the happier times ahead. Now, you know what's really in super interesting? The six of winter or swords was the overall energy in the general reading too. Divine feminine. So like it could be a message from her higher self to her or our higher self to us, our collective higher self. The masculine as it relates to the feminine. So of course, drawing on the energy of the masculine collective higher self. Um, him about himself. And the union as a whole. Overall, what the masculine would have the feminine do, contribute, surrender, however you want to look at it, toward the union sacrifice for the union whatever what he himself is willing to what the universe would have the two do and actually wants them to do and wants to help them with what they have to first affirm it and the outcome divine feminine the prince of autumn is back again trustworthy dedicated protective and funny it's important to make a detailed plan before starting any new endeavor once you have that plan in place, then you can take immediate action steps and get as much accomplished as, as possible. So, um, feminine, this guidance is telling us this week not to be reactionary, to pause before we just jump out the window. You know, don't, don't be a Gemini this week. Don't be an air sign. Um, you know, be it or be grounded, stay to the ground and think, what should I do first? Now, I don't want to suggest that Gemini's never do that because we also have that high, that high priestess thing going for us where we take a step back. But we can be reactionary and run off. Um, and that is what the feminine is guided against this week. Also, of course, the, 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 with this being a court card, there may be an actual significant earth sign or earth sign type um, involved here. Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Or someone very methodical, you know, who knows how to take a step back and make a plan. The um, masculine as it relates to the feminine and maybe specifically in her capacity as the Prince of Autumn this week. Renewal or major arcana card judgment. Renewal sounds nicer for the love reading, right? And it is a, a, a two. As a 20, it's a two, and twos are indeed about partnership. Um, and with this being the love reading, love partnership, of course. It's time to get clarity about your life purpose and to make changes so that you're on the path most divinely suited to you. Forgive what has been without judgment and fearlessly embrace what's to come. So what's coming up already? Fearlessly embrace what's to come means definitely chuck that energy of the seven of swords, right? Um, we don't want to have any, any sort of lack of confidence or lack of esteem or fear that's going to cause us to, to miss out. And 
as far as forgiving what has been without judgment, that sounds kind of like what the dice said for us, right? Forget it. So we're supposed to let some, let the past go and be prepared to move on to the future, regardless of which way we want to go. If we're walking toward this person or away from them, either way, we want to dispense with the past, any negative emotions that, that are still stuck. Um, also, the judgment for me is about abundance that's on its way to you, that you've earned, right? You deserve it. And we can earn abundance, especially as it relates to love, through just our acts, our good karma. It's paying off, and so we get this reward. Major Arcana card judgment for me also represents the planet Pluto, ruler of the sign of Scorpio, which is currently located in Capricorn. Retrograde. The masculine as relates to himself this week in love. Magician. Very nice. Manifestation. There is magic in the air. You can manifest everything you need to be successful. Major Arcana card, the magician, represents the planet Mercury and the sign of Gemini. All about manifestation. Making an intention and then bringing it in. So that could be part of a detailed plan. So this card, again, in relation to the masculine and relation to the feminine, could be him making a detailed plan as it relates to her. And that's going to be his means for manifesting what he wants, which is the relationship with her, the renewal of a relationship with her, perhaps. And the union as a whole, from, from his perspective, the Six of Summer. That's the Six of Cups. That's a soul, the soulmate card of the Tarot, of the Minor Arcana. The love and care of children could become an important part of your life or people from your childhood or your past, they should say, may return to it. Old memories can be healed or possibly old childhood dreams are ready to be revived. And same thing with old relationships that are ready to be renewed too, and to make some sort of comeback. Um, this yeah, totally pairs with the energy of renewal. And again, for me, renewal represents the planet Pluto in the sign of Scorpio. That is the element of cups, um, as is the six of summer or six of cups. Overall, high priestess, this is the time to pause and to reflect, not to take action. Trust in your spiritual gifts as nothing is hidden from your divine intuition. Again, for me, Major Arcana card, the High Priestess, represents the sign of Gemini, but also water signs like Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Uh, it is another two. So sitting here atop Major Arcana card 20 or two, Renewal or Judgment, um, together these two are like an 1111 here. And what does 1111 mean? Doesn't mean Twin Flame, that's not true. It means that the universe is trying to get your attention because you are in a period of manifestation. So it's showing you the 1111 so that you can go, oh, okay, I got to watch my thoughts. I got to watch the words that I speak over my life. All right. You know, I need to be thinking about positive things I'm trying to draw in right now. Like that relationship I'm looking for. That relationship I want to come back. My lost love that I want returned to me. which can definitely be what the Seven of uh, Swords was here representing, as well as the bird carrying the key, right? The bird could be some sort of messenger. What's the key to getting this relationship back? What the masculine would have the feminine do, again, surrender, whatever, toward the union this week, um, wow, he is the king of summer, warm-hearted, devoted, loving, and faithful. So this is how he wants her to be. <clears throat> A trustworthy person or relationship enters your life or to how to perceive him too. That can be another thing. You may receive wise and compassionate advice from someone. If you do, they are, you, you, know, you can trust that they're speaking um, genuinely from the heart. The king of summer is a Scorpio. Pisces or Cancer or someone likened to those traits or attributes if it's an actual character here. And it's somebody who is not afraid to get in touch with their emotions. So that could be what the masculine is looking for from the feminine too. Um, but their emotions are in check. So they're not just like being watering all over themselves. You know, they're, they're into control, but at the same time, they're right. They're willing to 
to check into those emotions and to explore them. What the masculine himself um, is willing, prepared to do, and it is the nine of summer. These are all the same cards um, <laughs> from the general reading, by the way. Uh, now's the time when your dreams come true. Don't worry about how this will happen. Just give gratitude to God for all that you have and all that's still to come. So he's ready to not only pray and to work on manifesting, making intention, prayer, whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing, right? Prayer, intention, law of attraction, it's all the same thing. Meditating on something so that it can come to you, all the same thing. That's what he's willing to do. That's what he's going to do. And then back it up with faith, right? Because then that needs a belief that I believe my dreams can come, come, come true. I believe my wishes can come true. I believe my prayers can be answered or will be answered. So that's what he's willing to do this week. And what the universe um, not only would have the two of us do, but the both archetypes, but wants us to and wants to help us with is, boom, the lovers. We got the same kind of card last week uh, for the love reading. It was like twin flame or something was in this position, I believe. Um, Major Arcana card six, the lovers. And in this deck, it really is about love. Like, whereas uh, in general, particularly in the right away, the lovers card can also have to do with, with making a decision. And when and where it does have to do with making a decision, it tends to be like a heart versus head decision. But in this deck, it is really more specifically about love entering your life. True and long lasting love, no less, finds its way into your life. Follow your heart with caring actions and choices. Major Arcana card six, the lovers, um, which we have here crossing the magician, also represents the sign of Gemini. So we've got a lot of Gemini and Scorpio here. Um, we just list a little bit of Earth, which can also um, be here because of the Scorpio, because again, Scorpio's ruler, Pluto, is currently retrograde in Capricorn. And the outcome. Ten of Wands. So a burden, which is another card from the general, by the way, a burden being, being relieved of a burden of either feeling burdensome upon somebody or feeling that somebody is a burden or a situation is a burden upon us. In either case, being relieved of that burden. Which explains why things get better, right? Why we're supposed to expect things to get better. Behind um, the Six of Winter, by the way, I picked it up, is the Two of Cups, although it was upside down. No. Changed my mind about what deck I was going to use next. So to get more of a perspective from the universe, I'm beginning with um, my Fortune Teller cards and Angel. Your angels are guiding and protecting you on your spiritual journey. And opening to birth, which is another very Scorpio type of energy, right? Rebirth and death. That's what they're all about. Universal energy brings you opportunity and possibility. Oop. Birth and death. Didn't I just say death and rebirth? Very Scorpio. Well, there you have it. Then you got them together. Oh, this is the devil. I'm sorry. Not death. However, it's still very Scorpio, at least right now, because again, Pluto is retrograde in Capricorn, which is represented by the devil in the tarot. Take care immediately to avoid temptation and deceit. So that's definitely guidance to, again, let go of something that's old, that's dead, and to allow for the rebirth. Right, get rid of the devil thing that's toxic, that's old and dead. And free yourself from that and just go with the rebirth. Devil. And opening to the sun. Open your heart to the enormous growth ahead. Devil. I'll do one more. And they kind of made me do two. Aw. Well, these two are awesome together. Look at that. It is unity. A time of divine understanding. Renewal. Like the renewal card, the judgment card we just had in the last spread. Peace and hope. You radiate and attract great love and proposal 
a romantic or business opportunity is indicated. And that energy came up in the general reading also. At the heart of the matter, there was the Hierophant. And sitting next to the Hierophant was um, the Knight of Cups and something else that was, you know, there was like a proposal, an offer of love uh, potentially coming in. Of course, the Hierophant can be representative of even, of even like marriage. It could be a well marriage proposal. Devil, I'll do one more. And it is the world. Be open to new possibilities in all areas of your life. Devil. And coming to chariot, charge ahead with confidence. Stay strong and focused. Overall energy is still devil. Take care immediately to avoid temptation and deceit. Again, the devil um, is a Capricorn energy, a Saturn energy. Saturn, which is also currently retrograde in Capricorn, which it rules, um, can be restrictive, very, very restrictive type of energy. Feeling um, of toxicity, of being stuck. Uh, sometimes it can be connected to sex too, but not with this message that's here. Um, we can see what we pair it with later. Maybe a sexual energy will come through like that Ace of Wands. Um, but otherwise it's telling us to watch out, like to avoid temptation. The divine being or couple, recent past, near future, masculine's higher self, blocks to individual or shared progress or union, what the feminine can do to help herself, what the masculine can, again, what the universe wants to help the two with, but they first would have to affirm to do that and how come divine being or couple this dragonfly i saw a dragonfly today it was making so much noise it was like tapping against a window when i was in the in the post office and then it sounds kind of like a cicada and then you know it was making so much noise and then it like flew up and i was like oh a dragonfly have confidence during this time of great joy, renewal, and connection to spirit. This is our third card that's been talking about that renewal that we saw in the first spread, right? That judgment. Recent past. Cracker. Positive energy surrounds you. Love, joy, and good fortune awaits. I just, I feel that that's connected to Jupiter, which is also in retrograde in Sagittarius, which it rules. Jupiter is the bringer of, you know, fortune, <laughs> luck, um, karma-based things, growth, expansion. So I think that that is connected to, to him. Um, near future, though. So moving forward. Moon. Pay attention to your intuition at this time. And move ahead confidently. The moon in the tarot represents the sign of Pisces. So that may be coming into, into play too. Um, but yeah, this is about us paying close attention to our intuition. And actually, um, not this week within this reading, but early next week, uh, the 4th of June, or the 3rd or 4th of June, I think it's the 4th, um, will be a new moon so something that happens this week could be leading to that or that would have, that would effectually be um near future right near future if the, this reading goes through the first and that occurs on the third the fourth that is the near future so something could be happening around the time of the gemini new moon that's initiated this week masculine's higher self death Again, that Scorpio energy coming through or, or um, that judgment, that Pluto, a time of natural transition and transformation. Of course, a Scorpio, actual Scorpio um, or perhaps other water sign. Again, Pisces possible may be specifically impacted, affected here, involved here, significant here. And um, Scorpio would be tied actually to that jupiter energy as a fixed sign blocks to individual or shared progress lovers there are two paths ahead be true to yourself so the block is 
we're sort of at a crossroad, which is another meaning of the judgment card, actually. It's like we're at a crossroad and we got to decide where do we go from here, if anywhere. Because some of us are going, you know, the distance, like that king of earth. Longevity. And some of us aren't going any further. So we got to decide. Two paths. Which one are we going to take? So that's, that's our block here. Maybe the indecisiveness that's connected to that. And the idea, again, is to pay attention to your heart. Listen to your heart. What does your heart want to do? Um, what the feminine, other than that, can do to help herself, it is a lion. Harness the loyal and protective aura of the lion and charge ahead magnificently. So whatever you do, release your fear and, you know, persevere. I didn't mean to rhyme, but that's what, that's what this is saying to do. Um, of course, lion, this card could be connected to a, a, an actual Leo, which is another sign um, very much tied to Jupiter as a fixed sign. Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, and Taurus. This dragonfly could be representing the Earth and Taurus. All fixed signs. What the masculine can do to help himself is luck. So again, this is the card of him having faith, similar to the Nine of Cups, which he picked for himself. Isn't that awesome? And of course, luck again associated with Jupiter. You're right to be strong and optimistic about the opportunities ahead. So this is like the universe confirming you were right to pick the Nine of Cups for yourself because that is the energy that's surrounding you right now. What the universe um, wants us both to do and wants to help us with, but we have to first affirm, is coffin. Natural endings abound. Take care with your health. They want us to let the dead go. And it's sitting here next to death. They want us to let the dead go so that we can have the new. And the outcome, world. So again, new possibilities. Be open to new, <laughs> it says it there. I didn't, I swear to God, I didn't know it said it there. Be open to new possibilities in all areas of your life. I was thinking about coming full circle, so there's new possibilities now. Um, yeah, but boom. If we allow for the death, there is new. And one more spread, beginning with card number 33 in communication from my numerology deck. And opening to happy ending, card number 93. Communication. Number 37, time out. Could be um, so a break that we need to take in order to meditate on some things, on some choices. Again, which path are we going to take? Time out. And 44, environment. Um, which for me is very Hierophant-like. The Hierophant in the tower represents Earth, right? The sign of Taurus, most specifically. So this green is coming through. And also for me, um, it can very much be about needs to make adjustments to our environment. The people, places, things with which we surround ourselves. That they should be of our vibration or higher. Uh, so that's coming up here with this card. And opening to seven... Um, personal growth. So again, we make adjustments to things that fit our vibration or are stronger than our own vibration, higher than our own vibration. That's all, you know, as a consequence and in furtherance of personal growth. Personal growth and two, patience. I talked in the general reading or before I did the, you know, as I was starting it about a feeling that I'd had about lo somebody losing their patience. And coming to card number 66, healing. Overall energy is card number 88, abundance. So what do we have in store for the masculine and the feminine this week? And maybe for both shared and with the most focus the heart of the matter crowning the masculine it is card number one new beginnings boom see because remember his higher his higher self the energy at present 
um, was death. So when that happens, we transition to the new beginnings. This is the next natural step. And it's orange. So that's the sacral chakra. That, that could be, again, that sexual energy that's been coming up here. Um, masculine surrounded by happy ending. Very nice. Moving... Um, right into a new space. And that happens also with new moons, right? New moons make for new beginnings um, and, and pleasantry, whereas full moons can sometimes be, you know, darker, right? Um, masculine subconscious, patience, patience. And it's more orange. It's a lighter orange, but it's more orange nevertheless. So again, it could be more this sacral chakra energy coming through, or it's like... <laughs> It's like the orange and the yellow make this lighter orange. Crowning the feminine. Card number 26, love partnership. Awesome. We are surrounded by that energy of love and communication. Coming in. We could be getting nice, sweet messages, hearing things, hearing what we want to hear. We might be seeing effort, masculine putting the effort in. We might be putting the effort in where we hadn't before. We, we, where before we might have been saying, you know what, well, screw him, whatever. I don't need this. We may have turned that around. Um, and looking at the double numbers, 13 plus 13 equals 26. And then we have the 33 here. Of course, 13 also equals 4. Or 11, 11, again. <laughs> The love partnership is kind of like the equivalent of the 11-11 or two 11-11s. Um, crowning, teaching and learning. Again, very hierophant, very hermit. Um, but it's about yeah coming through an experience and being wiser for it. And that applies to, to both. And 57 equals 12 equals 3. It's like another 3 crossing the 33. And crossing the 93, which is also a 3. Nine, 9 plus 3 is 12 equals 3 also. This is a year of 3. 2019 equals 3. Three is again about creativity. So this is definitely like the energy of co-creation coming through. Also, our connection, masculine, feminine, and, you know, the divine in between us that, that joins us. What two souls God has joined together, let no man tear asunder. All of that is connected to the three for me. At the root, self-love, though, at the foundation, right? Because we can't have any of that other stuff without this first. And again, it is more orange. So even in a um, sexual way, not in the sense that, you know, of want to have sex with yourself although that's fine too not my business and it is perfectly normal <laughs> um that's not what i mean that's not what i meant i mean like um not having like um inhibitions or hang-ups a lot of us do uh and sometimes some cases tied to like old vows i've had cut clients that i've helped with things like this tied to old vows of celibacy or abstinence or um you know having become in the past life, having been a monk or a nun, again, a monk, right? I said hermit, hierophant, that's like, you know, that monk or nun energy there. Um, so that could be connected to some sort of vow that we took in the past that we need to void as part of self-love. And at the heart of the matter, time out. It's a break for us. Um, maybe to get these things done so that this other stuff can happen, right? Allow for the a time to choose which path, allow for the death. And when the clock starts again, all this other stuff can come into play, can happen. Sort of like the hangman, which represents for me the planet Neptune in the sign of Pisces. Let's, let's clarify though, this um, card in the middle and to see maybe on what people will be focusing most surrender and more orange more sacral chakra so that could be what we're taking time out to work on and 91 equals 10 equals one which it crosses card number one in orange again new beginnings
Further advice to the masculine is the queen of summer. Queen of summer also showed up in the general reading as did the king that we just saw a little while ago. Compassionate, loving, giving, and psychic. This is a time of deep emotions and heightened intuition that you can trust completely. Be mindful that you don't ignore your own needs while you're caring for others. The queen of summer um, in the tarot represents the sign of Scorpio. So it's Scorpio again, because again, the, the fixed signs are connected to the queen. Um, but it can be a Pisces, a Cancer, or somebody who's not a water sign at all, just likened um, to those traits or attributes or feeling particularly emotional and or in love this week. For the feminine, here's some fear again. Nine of winter, your worries and fears aren't real. They're fueled by focusing on the negative, which gives power to that of which you're afraid. Stop worrying, let go of fear, and everything will be okay. Spirits, angels, what is um, the feminine sphere about for the most part? And the next upright card is this one. It is what we're deserving of, what we've earned. That's interesting. Also, potentially, party of three could be, fear, could be scaring us, too, with the three of autumn showing up. But three of autumn, although minor arcana, um, it's kind of like the judgment card for me. It's about abundance that is earned. Your most satisfying and profitable career or relationship comes from following your passions, listening to your heart, and doing what brings you joy. So again, when you're on that path, it's about the, when you got to choose one of the two paths, it's about choosing what's in your heart to choose. Your life purpose is best fulfilled by allowing your true talents and self to shine forth out into the world. And that's part of, again, self-love too, as well as surrender. All right, surrendering to uh, what's in your heart and what the universe wants for you. Further clarification, don't let yourself or anybody else or anything else steal the opportunity from you. Caution will help you to avoid the loss of valuables, including non-material resources like your peace of mind. Be aware of the results of your actions as well as what others might be doing behind your back. And <laughs> again, the, the feminine has a decision to make. She has two paths. She's got to choose one. Right now, she's not doing anything. That's why she needs a time, out, a time out and to work on surrender and maybe taking advantage of the new moon because the moon and the energy of the moon is representative of not only surrender, but specifically um, feminine energy and feminine energy of surrender for me. But I'll read this two of winter for you. Procrastination and worrying about what others will think is blocking you from making a decision. If you're torn between your own desires and someone else's, follow your inner guidance. So use your intuition, follow your heart, all of the above. From the fortune telling reading cards to the masculine wish, you got all these cards, all these messages about your luck this week, masculine, it's so beautiful. Your heart's desire is ready to come true. In the general reading, I started with a card called Heart's Desire. Feminine. Oh, okay. Maybe this is about what your decision is in some cases. Some sort of commitment. Marriage. You are attracting emotional fulfillment and unconditional love. Very two of cups here. From the numerology deck to the masculine, card number 66 is coming up and it is about healing which can also be connected to uh, the Queen of Summer um, and the energy of Scorpio in particular. And lastly, feminine. It is an, a six of our own, right? The masculine's got these two sixes here. And here we are, card number 87 equals 15 equals six. Synchronicity. Pay attention to the signs. Use that as part of your guidance, the signs, the syncs, the messages that come to you, um, you know, in dreams, in visions and actual signs that you see around um number numerical numerical messages double numbers like i see all day every day all, all the time all that kind of stuff pay attention listen i hope that you guys have enjoyed the weekly love reading i'll be back soon i did a lot of client readings maybe i'll share some and maybe you'll you know come if you need one to maybe somebody out there um will also be coming in and, and i'll post yours. We'll see. Thanks again for joining, liking, sharing, and subscribing. I appreciate it. Namaste.